This is a walkthrough of the headphone amplifier circuit from your BU EK307 Labs. So you might look at this circuit, it looks a little bit daunting. Today's actually Halloween, maybe it's scary, but it's not too bad if we break it down into the parts. So first thing we'll notice is right here, this circuit is a rail splitter. We made one of those in an earlier lab. And over here, we have a non-inverting amplifier. So the heavy duty parts of the circuit, the two op-amp parts, we actually already made and tested out. Today, we're just gonna put them together. So we'll look at the circuit part for part and just explain what everything does. This right here, this five volt source represents the power supply from your Arduino microcontroller. So your five volt pin, your ground pin, C3 is what we call a decoupling or a bypass capacitor. Most circuits have them. So they function to lower the impedance of the power supply. And it does things to prevent the op amps from oscillating and just make the circuits work better, more ideal. Then we get into our rail splitter right here. There is an op amp and we look at this op amp. It's a follower, meaning it has a gain of one. And the input to the op amp is a voltage divider with equal resistors between the five volts. That means we're going to get about 2.5 volts here, and we should get about 2.5 volts on the output over here on this node. And that's used to reference the op amp later on the circuit. And if we look at the connections right here, so we have this positive and negative connection. Those represent the power supply connections because we know that an op amp needs power as an input in order to run, in order to amplify. And those are disconnected to the 5 volts in the ground. So you'll notice this op amp is called U1A. And there's a U1B over here. So what this means is that there's one device, one plastic op amp, which is down here on my breadboard, and it's called U1, but there are two op amps in it. So this chip right here, it's an MCP6002 micro, or a dual op amp, and it actually has two op amps inside the package that saves space, makes things a little bit nicer. And you'll notice that there's only one power supply connection because they share the power supply connection. There are only two pins on this box that are for the power supply. And that means we don't have to put them over here because it's redundant and it kind of clutters up our circuit a bit. So we don't need that there. So now the other circuit, we just talked about the rail splitter. We have two and a half volts right here. We have our non-inverting amplifier. So it has an input. And then R4 is a feedback resistor. R3 is what we call a shunt resistor. And then once again, that's referenced to 2.5 volts. So that says that the zero, so to speak, of this op amp, meaning that when nothing's really going on, if the non-inverting input is 2.5 volts, this node is 2.5 volts, the output will be 2.5 volts. That's what we call the zero of the circuit. And we do this, we lift the reference above zero because we want the output here to be able to go plus and minus. And that's because we're driving a headphone which has a signal that is bipolar or a signal that can go plus and minus relative to ground. So that's the whole point of the rail splitter right there. So over here, we have a low pass filter. It's called an RC low pass filter. You'll learn about it later on in the class if you didn't already. And what it does is it blocks the higher frequencies that are coming from our input signal. And over here, we have an input signal. And in this lab, we're gonna connect it to our Arduino. We'll talk about that in a minute. So we have square waves coming from our Arduino. They got low pass filtered out by this filter right here. And effectively what that does is it reduces the amplitude and it changes the shape of the waveform so that we can do some amplification. Because your Arduino can only provide a digital output. It only goes from zero to five. And our op amps are powered by zero to five. So it wouldn't really do anything. We're not gonna amplify anything because we're just gonna saturate if we use the signal or inputted a signal on this amplifier that's zero to five. So in addition to filtering the signal, this lowers the voltage here so that we can actually have our amplifier amplify. And this is an exercise, you know, normally we wouldn't have to do that, but we need to get a low voltage signal to amplify. On the output of the amplifier, we have a headphone connected over here. So this represents a, this coil is a electrodynamic headphone. In other words, it's an electromagnetic type of device. And it could be a, any old headphones, you know, the kind that you put in your ears that you might have listened to on a, a telephone or maybe you have a Walkman. And the two passive parts right here, R5 serves to lower the current a little bit. It's a current limiting resistor. And that prevents us from pulling too much current out of the op amp. And it also reduces the volume level in your ear. You know, this is a, a lab. We certainly don't want to expose you to loud sounds. 
So R5 reduces the sound, and you could even make this larger if it's too loud when you're doing your experiments. C2 is very important. It's a polarized capacitor, an electrolytic capacitor, and it blocks the 2.5 volts that's coming out of the op amp from getting to the headphone. You notice the headphones connected to ground. If this capacitor wasn't here, we'd have effectively 2.5 volts. It would be obviously dropped by R5, but it would be a DC voltage on the headphone. And that's generally a bad thing because it could burn out the headphone or you know, at best, it'll just make it sound funny because it'll put it out of its linear range. So C2 blocks that DC signal. It's what we call a high-pass filter, and it just lets the audio signals flow through to the headphone. You'll notice there's a positive here. It's polarized, so you need to make sure you put your electrolytics in properly. C1 is the same type of capacitor. It's electrolytic. You'll notice there's a positive sign here. So the input for this lab comes from the Arduino. So I wrote a Arduino sketch, and it's available to you, that turns the Arduino into a function generator and a oscilloscope simultaneously. And what it does is it generates square waves of different frequencies, and it outputs them on the digital pins D2, D3, D4, D5, D6, and D7. And they're all different frequencies. And you could connect, say, in this circuit right here, I actually have a physical model of this circuit, I connected the output right here, for example, from D5, goes through this jumper, and it goes into my RC filter. You can see my 10K resistor right there, then to the rest of my circuit. So you could do the same thing on your breadboard, where you just have a tap right here, I call it, where you literally move this wire into the different pins, and it's connected to your input, your R7, and that'll vary the frequency, and it'll change what you hear and what you see on the output of your circuit. So what you see, is also, uh, we have a diode in here, an LED, so D1, and we have R6, that lowers the current through the diode, and we put a fairly large resistor in there so that it wouldn't be too bright, because we want to save most of the energy for our headphone. And you know, as the signal comes in here, if it's at a low enough frequency, you'll actually see the LED blinking. So you have two modes of sensory perception here. You have visual and acoustic, or audio sensory. And we also have an oscilloscope, and you could use either the Arduino scope, which is built into the code that I wrote, or if you have a Pico scope or some other oscilloscope, you're welcome to use it. So there's another part of the circuit. We'll look at the details of connecting the headphone amplifier. And this picture right here, which also is in your lab, shows some of those details. So you could see I have a plug for my headphones over here, so it's kind of narrow. It has to be narrow, otherwise it won't fit into the, the jack. This black box is a jack, and on the bottom of the jack, there are pins. And the three pins we're interested in are the ground, which is in the center. It's connected to this green wire. The left-hand input, which is connected to this orange wire. And then the right-hand input, which is connected to the yellow wire. And there's a common ground between the two, and if we want to produce sound into our left-hand headphone, if we apply a current or a voltage to this terminal. If we want to have sound into our right-hand headphone, we apply a signal to this pin over here. So this right here is a piece of my circuit. I don't have the whole circuit built. I just have my R5, which is 330 ohms right here. And you notice there's nothing actually connected to it. So normally you'd have an amplifier connected to it, but I don't have that in this example. R5 is connected to C2. And you could see C2 is this 100 microfarad capacitor right here. It's the same C2 as this one. And then the polarity is we have the positive lead connected to the resistor and the negative lead connected to the output going to the headphone jack. You could tell the negative lead because it has a white band that points to the negative lead. The positive lead is also longer. You could see I had to bend it out in order to get it to fit in the breadboard. So you want to make sure that capacitor is in the right way or it might not work properly. So the other connection I have here is I have a ground connection. This green wire connects to the purple wire. The blue rail over here is connected to my Arduino ground. And then the thing to notice is that I also have the red rail here connected to my 5 volts, and that jumps across the board. And then there's a ground connection out of the picture here. So I have 5 volts on the reds, and then grounds on the negative, or the, the blue terminals over there. And then I have two bypass capacitors in there. And those are the C3 capacitors, and those make the circuits work better. So I just stick one on each side of the breadboard, 
and that way I'm covered for all things.